checking the site dimensions against the architect's drawings is an essential part in the process of constructing a timber stud wall. This is especially important if the wall is going to be built prior to installation. Allowing a tolerance of 25mm between the height of the opening and frame will ensure no difficulties occur when manoeuvring the framework into position. This demonstration will illustrate a method of pre-constructing a straight stud wall with a window and door opening. Calculate the total quantity of timber required before beginning to mark and cut each piece to length whilst referring to the original drawing and site dimensions. Lay all the components on a clean and level surface in the order they are to be assembled. Traditionally, timber stud walls had complex joints to strengthen the frame. It's common practice nowadays to use simple butt joints secured with nails. Care should be taken when securing any joints at the corners of the frame to prevent splitting the timber down the length of the grain. This can be avoided if pilot holes are bored through the timber prior to fixing, or alternatively, flattening the points of the nail to prevent the grain parting as the nails are driven into the timber. Directing the nails into the timber in a dovetailed formation will improve the strength of the joints. Whenever possible, use other components cut for the stud wall to align the joints. This will prevent unnecessary marking out, improve accuracy and speed up the construction process. In most situations, a timber stud wall will be clad with plasterboard, and for this reason it's essential that the central positions of each vertical stud are accurately positioned to ensure that adequate support is provided between the joints in the plasterboard. The distance between the studs is often measured and referred to as the centre to centre. Finally, check the overall dimensions of the frame once it's been completely assembled. Use a length of batten to mark the width of the frame at the point of the door opening and transfer this position lower down the wall. Measure an equal distance of approximately 150mm up from the bottom of the frame and secure the batten between the studs to create a stretcher. The stretcher will hold the vertical studs parallel to each other, making the installation of the door and lining easier. Measure the stud wall diagonally from corner to corner in both directions to compare the dimensions. If they're not equal, the stud wall should be carefully adjusted until the frame is square. Place a batten diagonally across one corner of the frame and temporarily brace it with round head nails. It's vital that the position of the stud wall is correctly marked out on the floor prior to installation. 
In this demonstration, the straight wall is required to be fixed square to the existing wall. A square corner can be marked out on the floor using the 3-4-5 method seen here. Place the stud wall into position and secure it temporarily across the head with several folding wedges. Check the studs with a spirit level to ensure the wall is correctly positioned and vertical on its face and edge before beginning to secure the frame to the floor and ceiling. Remove the temporary brace and stretcher from the face of the frame to complete the manufacture and installation of a timber stud wall.